John, can you name two fitness companies that have built super strong brands? Uh, yeah, I can probably name more than two, but uh, two that come to mind are CrossFit uh, and Zumba, believe about, it or not. Yeah. How about companies that didn't do a ton of branding, but succeeded with direct response campaigns? Who are those guys? So the masters of just slamming marketing down prospects throats is the folks over at Beachbody, and they've made millions of dollars doing that. It's two different approaches. We're going to dig deep into this stuff in just a minute so that you can build a better business. This is Run a Profitable Gym. I'm Mike Warkenden. I'm here with Two Brain Chief Marketing Officer, John Franklin, and we're going to talk about brand marketing and direct marketing. So my question for you, John, as the expert, what is the difference between these two things? Let's lay it out for our listeners. So direct marketing is pretty straightforward. It's anything that is an offer to buy one of your existing services. So the most common example within the gym world would be uh, a low barrier offer like a $21 for a 21-day trial mm -hmm. or the infamous six-week challenge that is omnipresent everywhere on the internet. Now, brand marketing is uh, something that is directed towards building your brand, obviously. So that is uh, what you stand for as a business. So that could be something like running a testimonial or running a brand story or creating a piece of content that tells what you're about. Um, and both serve a important role in the marketing mix that we have as gym owners, but they're both very different and require different approaches and skills. Yeah. And we were talking about this before the show and you made the interesting point that you can't really do a lot of brand marketing if you don't have a brand. And that's a real problem in the micro gym industry because a lot of us, and this was, I was guilty of this for a really long time. I didn't have a strong brand. I tried to serve everyone and everyone and all the people in between. And I didn't know what I was doing. So I couldn't really tell my brand story because I didn't really know what it was. And a great example, I like a brand marketing is like, like a Budweiser or things like that, where a lot of times they're not saying buy my beer. They're just showing you a bunch of horses and this is where the beer comes from. And this is our story. They know their story cold. If you don't know your story, you're going to struggle. So that's an interesting one. And I pulled this off of a website here. It says important to build your brand before developing a marketing strategy because your brand affects the types of marketing strategies you'll employ. So what you're trying to do with a brand building awareness among prospective customers and enable them to get to know and trust the brand, which takes time. So let's go back into some of your original stuff here. Look at, let's look at some fitness brands that really did it right and built strong, strong brands that people knew and recognized. You just mentioned a couple off the intro. Who are they and how do they do it? So yeah, we can, we can talk about CrossFit. Uh, that's the world that both you and I come from. And the point you made in the beginning was, was right. Like most gym owners, when they start, don't have a great creation story or this great brand. For me, it was like, I like working out, so I will start a gym. And me so too. that's yeah. not strong enough to like start a movement. And not so uh, exactly. And while that may be the true answer, the authentic one, uh, that's not really something a lot of people are going to rally behind. There are things you can do later uh, there that uh, can make your brand a little more authentic, cohesive, make you stand for something. But if you think of something like uh, Greg Glassman, where he was uh, slowly coming up with this revolutionary way of doing fitness, he was getting kicked out of all his other gyms. Uh, people were coming to him because he had this very unique approach. When people left his gym, they wanted to continue doing it uh, and teach it to other people. So he went to the internet and started sharing it. Uh, he built this devote community around this idea, which is uh, you should you can lift weights and you can run and you can do different movements and things should be for time and fitness can be competitive and uh, you shouldn't eat a ton of processed sugar and and simple carbs if you're not exercising. And a lot of people got behind this and uh, it grew like wildfire. The the second one I said was Zumba and Zumba was. Um, in a lot of ways, a, a precursor to CrossFit in that uh, they made it really easy to uh, be an evangel an evangelicalist of the of the brand. In that, at the time, you you know, if you want to start a dance studio, you needed a hundred thousand dollars in a build out. But when Zumba came along, it was hey, you come do a certification course for three hundred dollars. You can use the name Zumba. You can rent out uh, a room in your local church for twenty bucks, and you can have thirty of the members show up, charge them whatever you want, and you pocket the difference, and and you're in business, and you can share this thing where fitness 
can be fun and done anywhere and it doesn't have to be expensive to to start a fitness brand and both of those obviously did uh really well until they did the crossfit brand was interesting and a lot of that came i think from greg himself where he was uncompromising he knew exactly what he was and what he wasn't and he was adamant about it and he didn't bend and that was a really interesting thing uh World-class fitness in 100 words is a pretty pretty strong brand statement that a lot of people can pair it off the top of their heads even, even now. And it's interesting because what you were saying, like, I did the same thing as you. I like working out. I have a gym. And we serve everyone. That's just not compelling at all. As my business has evolved and I've taken gotten out of it, it's my wife's things now. And she's passionate about making women between 25 and 65 really strong and really fit and really healthy. That's a much more compelling story and it's directed in. We have some great resources for gym owners about how to figure out what your niche is and what your brand is. Uh, I'm going to link to uh, one of the shows, uh, Kalita, who works for you over at Kilo, uh, talked about that. We're going to put a link in the show notes to some stuff that you guys can dig into if you want to clarify who you are and what you do. You mentioned Beachbody. So they didn't do a ton of branding, but they made millions and millions and millions. How did they do that? Right. Like their primary brand was uh, P90X. And the reason P90X became known was just that so many freaking people bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they did was they just found cheap attention and exploited it. So they were very early to infomercials and they figured out a winning formula where Hey, if we slap together some programs, we put some testimonials here, uh, we say these words, this is our offer stack. And then if we run a, you know, a thousand eyeballs to this thing for X dollars, we know we'll sell Y. Uh, and they just repeated that over and over and over and over and over again and literally made nine figures um, rubber stamping the same formula across a bunch of different programs. So I don't have a clue what the company's like about. Just pe uh, neither do they right now, to be fair. Uh, they just rebranded to body to be a little more inclusive. Yeah. Um, and so they, they actually went public during the SPAC boom in 2021. They're trying to find their way now. Uh, but that's an example of like, yeah, brand, not having a brand comes back to bite you a little bit. And they're, they're trying to backpedal and do a lot of that now, but they found this winning formula and rubber stamped it over a bunch of different fitness programs and, and had a nice little money printer for a long period of time there. Yeah. Like I, I say that I didn't know what their brand was, but it didn't matter because everyone I knew had the DVDs and was talking about it. Right. So I didn't know what they stood for necessarily or what they were doing or even what their logo looked like. But I knew that everyone who came to my gym had tried P90X and wanted to try more stuff like it or people had the DVDs or whatever. And they made, like you said, nine figures doing this. And that was without me understanding what the company stood for. I just knew that they were kicking out spicy workouts that you could do in your living room on a DVD. And it worked really, really well. So essential elements, we'll talk for gym owners. One gives gym, gym owners takeaways and things that they can do. What are essential elements of strong, direct action marketing at the micro gym level. What are we looking for here? Uh, a call out. So who it is you are targeting, a clear explanation of the benefit. So why they should buy the thing that you are selling. Uh, it is helpful to say uh, what pain points they will avoid uh, by going with your service. And then uh, some scarcity element is great. So, hey, we only got six spots left for this thing. And then uh, a clear call to action, whether that be buy this thing now, book a sales call, um, or uh, you know, message us to get more information. And that's really it. Now you spend a lot of time in this world looking at advertising, especially gym advertising. How often, let's say, like a percentage or out of ten, how often do you see gyms doing all of those things really well? Is it frequent or rare? Yeah, it's it's super frequent. So mm -hmm. more or less, uh, the most common campaign is a, a six week challenge, and it hits on a lot of those elements. Like the the most uh, pervasive ad seen on fitness feed feeds is, I'm lo looking for ten Philadelphia women looking to transform their body in the next days. A quick explanation of what the program is about, what they'll, and then asking them to book a call, and that is on everything is short and sweet. Um, and has worked really well for the past uh, 50 years. Like before it was a great Facebook ad, it was a great magazine ad, before it was a great magazine ad, uh, you know, it, it 
Yeah. Uh, what was before magazines? I don't even know. Yeah, it, it was all before it was a before it was a great Facebook ad. It was a great video. Before it was a great video, it was a it was a solid magazine ad. And I actually did a presentation um, at the Two Brain Summit where I pulled some of like the old six week challenge ads from the back of magazines to show how little the copy has changed over that course of time. So it doesn't have to be complicated. You basically just have to solve a problem for a specific group of people and tell them what to do and maybe give them a little bit of urgency. I mean, the human psychology doesn't change a bunch. It's the medium by which we consume our information. And then, um, you know, the back end of it is is a math game. So, hey, you got to get X amount of eyeballs to see this thing to get one person to take the desired result you want. And then based off of that, you calculate how much money you make once you you sell whatever the thing is that you're trying to sell. Um, and if you can do that profitably, you try and do as much of that as you possibly can without breaking your business. And so the, the, maybe the psychology hasn't changed, but the mediums have changed. And so if you think about uh, what we're looking at now on the blog this week, Chris Cooper is writing about something you can do very easily in direct action today, and it's selling by chat. And like, all you're doing essentially is messaging, and John, you spoke about this at the Touring Summit as well, messaging the people who like, follow, comment on your stuff out there and talking to them, and when the time is right, uh, asking them to come in for a free consultation. Talk to me a little bit about how that direct action has worked very well for people in this sell by chat format. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of times, people who are struggling with their marketing will come to me and say, "Hey, hey, I have a website dialed in. I'm running Facebook ads, and and, and nothing seems to work for me." And then the first question I'll ask them is, well, how many people have you talked to about your gym today? And the answer is more or less always zero. And so it's like, hey, while you're doing some of this other stuff that's maybe a little more advanced, the the primary thing you need to think about is um, how many conversations you're having with prospects. So, you know, the, the thing I tell everybody in the Two Brain Group is more conversations equals more conversions. So, yeah, in a, something like a sell by chat or messaging followers or engaging with uh, your existing audience a little more, uh, you're increasing the number of perspective uh members you are speaking to every day and when you talk to more perspective members you sell more perspective members and um so it's a powerful strategy it's not it's very simple but it, you know it's not easy to do consistently mm -hmm. so if we're talking moving on to brand marketing that's a little bit different how does that complement direct action marketing like how can gym owners out there use brand marketing and building their brand to make their direct action stuff more compelling I mean, good brands convey trust. Mm. And so when you have trust, it makes it easier to to sell people stuff, right? Um, one of the advantages I have marketing to brain is that, you know, we've been telling Chris's brand story every day on the blog for the last eight years. And people have been listening to this podcast for seven years and know that we uh, put out good information and we partner with very reputable people in the space and our, we have a backlog of customers who say good things about us uh, and we display them prominently and tell their stories and people know what we're about. And so then when I ask them to book a call or buy a ticket to the Two Brain Summit, they have that backlog of content. They, they understand what Two Brain is and there's a little bit of trust there and they're more likely to pay $500 to go um, see some of our mentors and, and top industry pros speak in Chicago versus if I was John's gym consulting company and nobody knew who I was, I'd have a much harder job. I'd probably need to spend a lot more money to get that same $500 in someone's pocket, get them to close down their gym or, or, you know, leave their gym for a couple of days to go watch a similar event. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the best step for a gym owner if you want to start building a brand right now? So first of all, I'll tell you, you have to have a brand. You have to have an idea of what your story is and your, your avatar, client avatar, your niche, all the, the, those essential things. What would you do to start? And I, I mean, I'll toss out one of the things that you said, like, you know, even getting someone to do Google reviews is a start to getting your brand out there, right? You're having people say, I like this thing and I recommend it to other people. What are other things that people can do? Like, do they need to start running, like, say, brand advertising where it's just like the story or snapshots of their brand? Or what would you do to help them start clarifying in the market who they are and what they do? Well, if your story sucks, you don't want to, you know, spend a lot of money or time telling it, but um, there are other things that you can do, right? There's a there's a book um, that came across my desk, uh, Brandon Cullen of uh, Metabolic, who was from the CrossFit world, 
uh, used it when he was building out the the metabolic franchise system when and they're now somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 locations it's called primal branding and uh, um basically a framework for creating a belief system that attracts communities of people who who want to believe that's like the 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 tagline there and we talked a lot about the creation story which is one element of the seven uh but there are plenty of there, there, there are six other things that you can do, um, you know, because of acknowledging that not everyone's creation story is uh, most interesting in the entire world. So um, the most important one is like having a strong leader. And so, you know, that is something that I think um, watching kind of the rise and uh, fall and I guess now plateau of the CrossFit brand, uh, losing Glassman was it was huge. It was something that was felt strongly within the community. The, uh, another one is non-believers, so being polarizing. So CrossFit was incredibly good at attracting criticism, and it was incredibly good at attracting fanatical uh, people that would go and defend. And you see a lot of that now in, in the diet space. So like uh, carnivore, for example, yeah, yeah. is something that just like pisses off a lot of people and then has a lot of people screaming at those pissed off people, and it naturally spreads the word. Um, and then you have things like sacred words and rituals. So you have your, your wads and your metcons. And so that you have your own language and these things that you do that are different that, that, um, you know, you identify, I can easily identify another CrossFitter versus, uh, someone who doesn't believe in the methodology. And then there's the actual creed. So if you have a, a, a weak creation story, uh, having a strong creed is important. So an example from Metabolic, which I was talking about before, uh, is they treat their gym like a workout room. And so when the class starts at like, if the class starts at six, the door locks in the front of the building at six. So if you show up at 601, you're not working out. Doesn't matter if your kid was late or crying or whatever was happening in your life. Um, and they get one star reviews for that all the time, but it creates this polarizing thing and people talk about it. Um, one response to one of those polarizing reviews actually went viral and over like had over like 4 million impressions from, uh, really? people arguing either way about it. Um, and so, yeah, it's not just, Hey, why did I, I I'm John, why did I start this business? There are a bunch of other things that you can do to create a strong brand. Um, and that framework, uh, those seven things that we just talked through, um, it's a good starting point for, for anybody. So Chris has talked about quick casting. So for him, it's a short, you know, direct shot of branding into the marketplace. He does it for his gym catalyst. He gets on there into the weekly catalyst show where he does very quickly states the brand and brings some things out for his market. So what do you think of that, John? The idea like Chris says, says, I'll give you some prompts here. He'll, he'll, he says, imagine I'm interviewing you and listener, you're going to record a response to why did you start this business? That's going to be your first one, your second one. How has this business changed since your first year? What is the mission of your business? So those are three shows right there that you could la launch as very short podcasts that show branding. You do YouTube podcast, however you want combo. What do you think of that idea, John, is just weekly content designed to state who you are and what you do. And you can frame this around programming briefs or like upcoming events or something like that. It's almost like a digital newsletter kind of thing. What do you think about it? So in the worst case, it's not going to be detrimental, right? Yeah. Unless your mission is something like anti-Semitic or political, uh, you know, talking about these things are, is not going to hurt you. And at best it, it, it can create a cultish following. Right. Um, but the, but the trick is to try and be, uh, authentic, right? If you are running a local CrossFit gym with 75 people and you're stating that your mission is to, you know, cure world hunger, uh, not a lot of people are going to be able to rally behind that. But if it's like, Hey, I grew up in this town. I see how, you know, sugar and lean a sedentary lifestyle has affected all these people in my family. And, uh, you know, I was overweight and I wanted to, and then I found the solution through X, Y, Z. Um, and my mission is just to help as many people as I can in this town with this methodology. It's my passion. It's thing that I live for. I I'm from here. I was raised here and, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to leave the town better than I found it. Um, if you want to, if you want to join me on that mission, you know, let, let's have a chat. Something like that could be a very strong thing, mm -hmm. uh, because it sounds a lot more authentic and something that people can, can rally behind and, um, you know, uh, feel about. 
I'll put a link in the show notes list just for you to take a peek over at what Chris is doing on his at his gym. And you guys can take a look at the Catalyst Quick Cast and see if that's something that you want to do as well. John, we started working together about five years ago. You were in big time into the pay-per-click stuff because you were doing a lot of Facebook advertising and so forth. We uh, kind of as a business and as a, as a unit have evolved into more content marketing and your views have changed a little bit. Talk to me about, because the quick casting is essentially content, it's content with a whole dose of branding in it. How have your views of content marketing changed over the last few years, maybe five since Facebook advertising started to change a little bit? So I think my view on brand has changed okay. and it has changed in that, uh, I think it's a lot more important than I initially made it out to as a, as a novice business owner. So if I was to start a new project today, I would spend um, probably a thousand times more effort on high, like hashing out the concept and what it stood for and the aesthetic of the space. For example, I own five gyms. We didn't even have a common name. So everyone was his own kind of name, like just no brand whatsoever and just relied you know just just rode the the glory wave of facebook ads and that worked for me um but like i said coming into a business and running ads um for two brain which is a business with strong reputation being involved with kilo where we were very deliberate about building brand and, and, and reputation there uh, i realized how much easier that second piece is if you nail down that first piece and um while if you look at some of Kilo's marketing versus Two Brains marketing, those are very different brands, even though there's a lot of overlap in terms of the talent working on them. Um, you know, and I think if you ask someone who's working both those, uh, who who uses those two services, you know, what each stands for, I think they would give you uh, answers that are, are pretty close to the answers that I would give. Mm -hmm. And that and that and that makes the ad piece easier. No. And I agree because we have four, we teach two brain clients to run four different funnels that can operate all at the same time. Uh, their referrals, organic social media, content, and paid ads. Uh, those are loosely ordered. Referrals is probably the first thing you want to do because your current clients are going to have friends and family members that you can get. So every client should be a plus one at minimum if you do that properly. Then you've got organic social media. That doesn't cost you much more than a few minutes to put up some posts regularly. Content maybe takes a little bit more time if you're making a podcast, YouTube video, or blog, something like that. But again, still not a lot of expense beyond your time, especially as a founder. You probably have that time if you're just in the new stages of gym ownership. And then Chris's fourth funnel is that paid advertising funnel. If these things are all working at the same time, they work really, really well. And you don't always have to have them working. Like Chris will tell you, you know, maybe right now we just do referrals. We'll work on paid ads down the line. But the gym owners that are wanting all four at once have a really strong, like a steady stream of high quality, hot leads for the most part, because they're building their brand at the same time as they're running all the other campaigns and those direct action campaigns. Then when they say, hey, I've only got five spots left for this brand new program to help you lose 10 pounds in the next six weeks or whatever it is. That works because you've got this warm audience who knows, likes, and trusts you. John, in your travels, have you seen any gyms, and you don't have to remind them by name, but gyms that have just, they have a brand, like right off the bat. Because back in the day, we were sloppy about it. I was the same as you, where my brand was a thing in my mind, but not communicated in the market. Are you seeing more gyms now in 2024 that just have like a thing? You can smell their brand when you walk through the door? Definitely. Um, check out. Dane McCarthy over at the athletic clubs. Uh, he's someone who, who has a very clear brand and a very clear avatar that he's uh, going after. And he's also like, they have a gym uniform. Everyone wears black and white, the aesthetics, black and white. They recreate, they train in what's called squads and it's meant to recreate the college locker room, college team vibe. Um, and they're doing a great job uh, getting that uh, younger, Gen Z population that, you know, has high paying jobs and, and they're nailing it. Another one is Cassie Day, uh, All Day Fit. She's out of Toronto and her whole thing is representing underrepresented bodies in fitness. So if you take two seconds on her website or her Instagram, it'll be very clear what that means, who she's targeting and what she does. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like the strong, like if you have a very strong brand, you may not need paid ads at all. Like you talked about the four different funnels uh, being weak in one can tell you about the other, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're if you're weak in referrals, you can make up for it by being really strong at paid ads. But 
you know, being weak in referrals tells you that your your service is crummy and there's something that needs to be fixed there. Um, where if you're weak in paid ads, that may be deliberate because you're getting any referrals and that's not something you know if you're if you're happy with where your business is you, by all means don't go out and offer a low barrier offer a six-week challenge don't do that um but yeah you need to look at all four of them and, and find the mix that uh is right for you but I, it is common to see uh gyms with very large well-established brands not doing a ton in the paid marketing realm because they don't need to mm -hmm. and the thing that i see the, the biggest mistake that i see when people and I come in from a content marketing standpoint, I see people starting something and then stopping. And I can't stand that because if you're going to start like a podcast or a blog or whatever it is, YouTube channel, you got to keep it going because if your brand is this sporadic kind of, it happens every second Thursday on the third month of every, you know, leap year, that doesn't do anything for a brand. What you see is this is it from the strongest brands in the marketplace in any marketplace is this just drumbeat of this is who we are. This is what we do over and over again. And you can think about, you know, Apple, Bud, all these other ones, these long term iconic brands that always do the same kind of thing. You get to know, like and trust them because they're always more or less the same. There's small variations as products or services evolve, but they're doing this constant standard beat of always doing stuff in the marketplace. People see that. But what I see in gym owners very constantly is I started a podcast and it's like seven episodes in, it's gone. And that's that shows weak branding to me. That's not a commitment to that content. Say the same thing with social media where you'll look at a gym and they'll have a whole bunch of social media showing some stuff, but then it just dies for three months at a time and there's just nothing. And you wonder if they're even still open. So I'll give you a piece of advice, guys, if you're working on your brand through the content or organic uh, social media funnels, make a commitment to it, set aside the time and hammer it out every single time. And again, Chris is going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on the blog this week to pick cast. If that's the way you want to pursue it, you can do it probably in about five to 10 minutes a week. If you do it right. And Chris has step-by-step -step stuff for you, John, let's uh, as we send people out the door here, let's give them a couple of things that they can do. Branding action. Is there anything that you would recommend that gym owners can do? Maybe in addition to podcasting or quick casting to start building their brand, what is an essential action they could take today? I mean, I want to make a, a quick comment that uh, yeah. to to your point, you have to be very long term oriented for any of that content marketing stuff to work. Like yep. uh, for the listeners, Chris Cooper, Mike Workington, these guys, they're they're sick in the head. They're just built different. They can do this thing for years and years and years and years and let it pay off. Um, like it is, it is very very hard to do when you're getting it off the ground and you're posting to five six people. You're terrible at at, at what's going on. Like. Even, even into the tube void. brain. Well, even two brain. Like today, uh, you know, I looked at our our analytics, and there was a page on our site that was getting a ton of traffic, and it was from a blog post we literally wrote two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and it did nothing, and then all of a sudden just, and it just works in this weird, unpredictable way. But to your point, you have to be consistent. But it, it, it's painful as someone who has a podcast now and knows that like over, uh, you know, for two, three years, you have no clue if it's working or not. And so that, that's why most people quit. I think some people, like I said, Mike and, and Chris, they're, they're built for it. Um, you know, they can, they can do it. Uh, and they're, they're, they just put out good work. They do it consistently. It, it feeds something in them. If you're not one of those people, um, you know, you got to find, you got to find a medium that works for you, whether it's writing quick cast, like there is something that you should be able to do. But to Mike's point, you have to do it consistently over an incredibly long period of time for it to be worth your while. And I'll give you a shortcut though. If you're a two rank client, the content vault has literally years of content that you can just take. All you have to do is customize it very quickly for your gym. There's blogs, there's stock imagery, there's entire social media campaigns. There's more than a year worth of stuff that you could just download and funnel out on a calendar if you so desire. And that would take care of an entire year of content that would help you learn about it and start to build momentum as you build your audience. So if you're not interested in that kind of stuff, there are done for your services out there for touring clients that will help you do that. Direct action, John, would you talk about, uh, would we be talking about like a 5130 post or would we be talking about what would be the best thing for Jim to do right now? So by chat, what would you recommend? Yeah, a five one, like if we're for, you need clients today? Yeah, then let's let, yeah, tell, yeah, tell yeah. them what a 5130 yeah. is. How does that work? Um, you go on your Facebook page and you make a post saying that you're looking for five people who want to transform for, 
whatever the services you're offering in the next 30 days and you ask them to comment below if they're interested and then when someone comments, you start chatting with them. Mm. And uh, it works incredibly consistently. Some gym owners do it once or twice and kind of forget about it. The best gym owners do it over and over and over and over again, kind of like the best gym owners at ads have been running the same set of ads more or less for the last 10 years. So works, do a lot of them. Five people who want to do one thing over the next 30 days. That's the uh, formula 5130. People who would use this post generate tons and tons of conversations. And many of them, and I've asked, I specifically asked our gym owners about this. Many of them will tie like large amounts of revenue or new clients to just these posts. And people say, I made this post. I literally got three new clients, but you can't just make the post and walk. You have to engage them. And that's that sell by chat tactic. Again, Chris is writing about that in the blog. So please make sure you check that out this week as well. John branding and direct action, brand marketing, direct action campaigns. Thanks for laying it out for people. And uh, we'll see you next time uh, when you're hosting the show. All right. Thank you, Mike, for having me. All right. I'm Mike Morgan, and this is Run a Profitable Gym. Please subscribe so you don't miss a show. John is always here with some of the best business owners in the industry. I've got all sorts of gym owners, and Chris Cooper chimes in all the time with his expertise and perspective from the very top of the hill. Thank you very much for being here, and we'll talk to you next time.